Welcome to part five of this English League's flipped Football Manager 2018 experiment. Thank you for all the support on this experiment series so far. I'm sure there's lots of you that have also downloaded the database from the Steam Workshop and either you're holidaying into the future to see what happens on your save or you're managing one of the teams in this chaotic database. Now then, for part five, I thought I'd holiday 10 years into the future and do more of an overview episode today rather than looking at things in detail after three seasons. We'll just have a look to see which teams have won what, which teams are now dominating English football, see how the landscape of English football has changed in the year 2037. I'm happy to continue this. Uh, I think if there's enough interest on this video, then I will holiday another 10 years. So let's say if this video gets to 200 likes, I will upload another part and we'll holiday another 10 years. So as you can see, I've holidayed until the 10th of June 2037, where England have a 67-year-old Antonio Conte in charge. Quite random, but he's a quality manager. <laughs> We've seen Gary Johnson manage uh, England, of course, haven't we? If we just look at the managers over the years, Gareth Southgate, Gary Johnson, Lucien Favre, whoever he is, Eddie Howe. Oh, he actually became manager in the end. That's good to see. Then we had a Norwegian and most recently, Antonio Conte. Tenth in the world rankings. They have been as high as first. Have we seen them win the World Cup? We'll have a look in a bit. That would kind of make me think that they've won the World Cup because 2030 would have been a World Cup year, of course. Uh, English Premier League, it has gone... I mean, I think it was started on four-and-a-half-star reputation, and now it's gone down to four-star reputation, but actually it's top. It's back to the top of the European rankings in, in regards to reputation. So that's really quite interesting. Man United have started to dominate, as you can see here. They're back to the top. It's it's a little bit disappointing. The last team that wasn't Man United or Arsenal to win the league was spending more back in 2022. The last 15 years, it's all been down to these guys. In the last pass, of course, we thought Arsenal probably were the most successful team because they'd won the Champions League. They'd won three titles. But since then, they've only won one and Man United have won nine with Arsenal runners up most of the time here and we haven't seen any of these Spennymoor Salford teams in the top three for a long long time it's it's basically returned to what we thought it would although interestingly most recent season West Ham have been relegated so they got back to the top division but they have been relegated whereas teams like Bognor Regis are still in here York, Curzon Ashton, Spennymoor, Harrogate, Gainsborough, St Albans, Salford, Concord Rangers, Blythe and Alfreton we've still got plenty of those original teams that started in the Championship and the Premier League in this division uh, Blackburn have done particularly well on this save because they got promoted multiple years in a row but that top six it's kind of the top six teams that race to the top and they've, they've stayed at the top but Man City what has happened to Man City? We'll have a look in a second. Uh, Man United, best team in England. They might have won some Champions League titles. We'll have a look in a second. They're a five-star reputation team and they're rich. I think Man United and Arsenal fans, if you had the option to drop all of the Premier League teams down to the National League South and North, you'd probably take it if you knew that it would end up like this in 20 years' time. Like, you might have, you know, have to put up with all those lower league teams for a few years but if you were to then return to be in the top two teams in England I think Arsenal and Man United fans would probably take that knowing that they would be dominant again in a few years time a top goal scorer in the Premier League is this region a Turkish region playing for Spurs Spurs seem to be doing rather well as well they're second but they haven't quite managed to win the league Jurgen Klopp is currently in charge four and a half star reputation team they are rich if I just go down the divisions then to have a look to see what has been happening in the last 10 seasons. So most recently, Man City have been promoted to the Premier League, so they're back in the big time. In fact, they have been back in the big time previously, but they've turned into a yo-yo team. Remember, at one point, they yo-yoed between League 1 and 2. They then made progress, they got promoted to the Championship. It's just been very slow progress for them over the years. And they finally did manage to get back to the Premier League, relegated straight away, promoted straight away, survived, relegated, promoted again. So it's been a topsy-turvy journey for them. They are, they've only got a three-star reputation, a you know, national reputation. They're not known on the world scene anymore. Perhaps they don't have many worldwide supporters now. Uh, they are rich, though. And interestingly, they've got West Ham's Ed Milson Fernandez as manager. 41 years old now. That really is quite random. 
Now, the other teams to go up, Poole, Oxford City, Chef Wednesday, Brighton and Hungerford relegated. I'm sure there's some teams here that have probably stayed in this division the whole time. Possibly true, right? They've, they've been a yo-yo team between the Premier League and Championship. There must be... I mean, North Therabee. They've been in the Championship since 2022-23 season. They've got Tyrone Mings in charge. There's some real-life Premier League teams in here with Leicester, Newcastle, Bournemouth. I mean, have they ever been promoted, Newcastle? No. They've, uh, they were actually relegated to League One at one point, but they've never managed to get back to the top flight. Crystal Palace finally got back to the Championship. Took them a long time, as you can see here, but now they seem to be stuck in the Championship. Leicester City were promoted for one season, but they've been in the Championship ever since. Let's just look at the most the past winners so we can have a, a look to see who's been promoted. So these are the winners of the Championship over the last few years. Runners up and the playoff winners. Down to League One then, where, where Crew Alexandra are promoted as champions. It really is random now. All the teams are mixed up. We've got some real-life National League teams in the top few divisions. We've got some real-life Championship and Premier League teams all muddled up everywhere. It's quite amazing. Like Middlesbrough have just been promoted uh, along with Bristol City from League One. Coventry, Exeter, Wrexham and Wigan relegated to League Two. But we've got Derby County stuck in this division. Brentford, Nottingham Forest. No real life Premier League teams there, I don't think. I think most of them have got to the top two divisions now. Let's just look at the most recent winners then. As you can see there. Uh, I mean, East Thurrock won it in 2027-28. Uh, Alfreton, I think they're in the Premier League now, aren't they? Yeah, finished bottom, but they've been up and down a bit. Western Supermare, I remember talking about them in the last episode. They have had a <laughs> really random journey. Like, they relegated three times in a row, promoted back to the Championship, relegated to League One. They got promoted last year by the playoffs, and they're back in the Championship. They haven't quite managed to get back to that Premier League, though. We can see here they're under a transfer embargo due to breach of financial regulations. So they're in a, a spot of bother at the moment. Let's go down to League Two, then, where Huddersfield have finally been promoted from League Two. They have had an arduous journey on this. In fact, they were promoted before, but relegated straight away, and now they've been promoted again. But it took them so long to get out of the National League North. In fact, they've only got out of it since the last part. Then they spent a few years in the National League and then promoted twice in a row to League One, back in League Two, promoted back to League One. So they've made slow progress as well. Uh, promoted with Swindon, Preston and Plymouth, with Sunderland getting relegated out of the, the Football League here. They started in the National League North spent many years trying to get promoted you can see they've journeyed up a bit but they're going to be back out of the football league this season let's just look at the most recent winners then uh, Hemel Hempstead were winners last year they were started in the Premier League relegated all the way down but now they're back in League One Lincoln City there got promoted I, I just love this it's amazing to see this the football league completely muddled up by this point I love it Okay, National League Premier then, or the conference, whatever you want to call it. Watford, I forgot about Watford. They haven't even, they've only just been promoted from the National League for the first time. They got promoted really quite early on in 2020-21. So they weren't the last team to get promoted out of the real life Premier League bunch. But they got stuck in the National League for so long. They just weren't anywhere. They're finishing mid-table, they finished second at one point. That's the closest they got until... Uh, last season second and now they've finally been promoted to the football league they've only got a two-star regional reputation they've i mean they're nowhere it, wow really quite interesting to see what has happened to watford on this qpr have also been promoted burnley though still stuck in the national league so they're even worse than watford they were promoted i think the season before watford they did quite well to go up in the 2019-20 season but this early period in this save was when it was tough for these teams because there was lots of real-life Premier League and Championship teams in the National League. Only two teams can get promoted, and they just got stuck. I guess their finances uh, struggled a bit. They almost got relegated a couple of times, as you can see there. Um, but finally, after years in obscurity, they have managed to get up to the... Uh, well, no, in fact, they haven't. They're still stuck in the National League. 
but surely they will get promoted at some point. We've still got Sheffield United stuck here. There's a few real life League One and Two teams in here. Reading have just been relegated from the National League. Um, they they've had a torrid time as well. They've got Loic Remy in charge. Peterborough just relegated from the National League as well. So it's not been not been great for some of these teams, has it? Here's the playoff winners and the and the winners here. Th runners up in third place doesn't count for anything unless you can get out as um, playoff winners. Bradford Park Avenue, they're in League Two. I think they're doing better than Bradford City. I might be wrong. We might have they might be slightly higher now. Let's go down to the National League North then, where Bradf Oh, see Bradford City. They've just been promoted to the National League with 95 points. Gateshead went up by the playoffs. Teams in here, which I mean, it's kind of returned to normality. FC United have been rele relegated all the way down here. They've got insecure finances. There, yeah, it's not gone well for them, has it? They started in the Championship. Spent many years there, but finally, after a few years in League Two, relegated back out of the Football League, and and now they're back where they started. Few teams are back where they started, really. Uh, Braintree, Haybridge, and Harlow relegated. So Braintree, I mean, they were in the the Championship at the start, relegated four years in a row, back to where they started, relegated back into this regional level, and then relegated again. So it's not really gone to plan for Braintree Town, has it? Let's look at the most recent winners then. There you go. And the National League South has just been won by Aldershot, pipping Portsmouth and Charlton to it. So Portsmouth and Charlton still stuck at this level. Wimbledon have just been promoted by the playoffs. Uh, are there any surprise teams in here? I don't think so. But we do have teams like Bolton Wanderers stuck in obscurity. Blackpool, um, a couple others as well that have been relegated out of these divisions and are just stuck in the, the lower regional levels of English football. Here's the past winners, so you can browse this if you're interested. Moving on to the FA Cup then, it was more interesting at the start of this this save because we saw St Albans win it three times, but it has returned to normality. Liverpool have won four of the last five, Blackburn Rovers managed to win it the year before. But we haven't seen one of the real-life National League North, South or National League teams winning it. Since St Albans in 2026, Spenny Moore were runners up to Manchester United in 2035. York runners up to Man United in 2029. But yeah, it's it's it has returned to normality, hasn't it? Which is a bit of a shame. Now the Carabao Cup has mended itself for the simple reason that Football Manager have recently done an update, which um, fixed the problem. Apparently, it was a normal problem where the the first round was drawn and it was played but then the second round wasn't drawn so it's it should be fine in your game now if you if you start this say from scratch um so we have seen the Carabao Cup return to England from the 2028-29 season with Arsenal beating Liverpool Spennymore did win it they beat Manchester United in the 2035-36 season we've seen Truro finish as runners up St Albans finish as runners up that's great to see Community Shield here well, Arsenal, Man United and Liverpool are the winners here. This is the Checker Trade Trophy. We've started to see the under-23 teams do well. Bogdan Regis under-23s, though. They've they've managed to win it. So I wonder if they've got decent youth facilities. Let's have a look. Facilities. Uh, OK. 14 on training, 14 on youth facilities. Re youth recruitment's not great. But they do actually... They've managed to win the Checker Trade Trophy, which is pretty good going. They managed to beat League 1 and 2 teams to get there. Going down to the English FA Trophy, Watford, the most recent winners. We've seen Bradford Park Avenue win it, Wigan, Sunderland, Maidstone. This is the English under-23 Premier Division 1. Which teams? Oh, see, look, we've got some, um, you know, St. Albans under-23s in here. We've got Dagenham and Redbridge under-23s. We go down to the second tier. Look, that's full of, you know, real-life National League teams in this division, which is good to see. So St. Albans must have a decent youth academy to have featured in here. Let's have a look at them. 17 on training, 18 on youth, 12 on recruitment. That's okay. They've got a good state. Phil Wood Park. Is he a, a club legend? I presume so. Phil Wood was a player. I don't know if he's real life or some sort of regen from this save. Looking at European tournaments, and we have seen Manchester United win it twice since the last part. They've also been runners-up twice, as you can see there. And 
in the Euro Cup. Any English winners? Bogner Regis have managed to win the Euro Cup. Oh, that is brilliant. That is, I love that. Well done to Bogner Regis for winning the Euro Cup. That is a sensational achievement. And in fact, they've been in the Premier League the whole time on this save. Not many teams have managed to do that. They've got a four-star continental reputation. And they're doing really well. Spending more runners-up as well the following year. Likewise, they've been in the Premier League the whole time. Their rich four-star reputation. Adebayor is their manager, which is quite random. Spurs have also managed to win it with Chelsea runners-up. think that's it in terms of English teams. World Cup. Scotland have won the World Cup on this. That is unbelievable. I mean, we saw Engl England win it in 2030. That's kind of to be expected. Sweden runners up again. They've done really well, but really unusual winners on this. Brazil, Sweden, Spain, England and Scotland beating Japan at the Chinese 2034 World Cup. That is incredible. I just want to have it. I mean, this isn't related to anything we've done. But that is pretty unbelievable that they've managed to do. They won 3-2 in the final. What a final that is. They're 28th in the world rankings. They've dropped off. But at one point, they must have had a really good team three years ago to go and win the World Cup. I mean, Scottish people, you're dreaming, aren't you? That's If that ever happens, that would be, un that would be wow, <laughs> some party. And the Euros, well, Spain have dominated this tournament, as you can see, when it's three years in a row. England runners up twice. And Holland most recently managed to beat Italy. I thought we'd have a look at World Player of the Year just to see if there's any unusual players in here from like our teams. I, I kind of doubt there is, but I'm just going to whiz up quickly and have a look along to see if there's anyone. I mean, at this point, there's still real life players. Coutinho won it at the age of 32, as you can see there. Thomas Lamar and Dybala's second there. Lamar won it again. And there's the first region, I think. Kevin Dennis. Still going. I want. I mean, if there was like a Spennymore player in there, that would be amazing to see. But it doesn't look like there is, unfortunately. I'm guessing it's the same for all of these other ones as well. A World Golden Ball, but maybe Footballer of the Year. I mean, World Team of the Year. Sorry, there might be someone featuring. If I just scroll back, I might not spot someone. If you do, stick it in the comment section below. Anything I don't spot, just stick it in the comment section below because I don't spot everything when I'm trying to multitask. Um, but oh, I really wanted to see like a Bognor Aegis player, a Spennymore player, a St. Albans player in this list, but I don't think we're going to see. It's the same old story. Real Madrid, PSG, Barcelona, Man United dominating these lists. And yeah, not it's a bit boring, isn't it? Sure, there's plenty of players from these other teams in the England team, though. Let's have a look. Go down. Concord Rangers, Rangers player, Curzon Ashton player. Jim Collins is the England number one at the moment. Uh, Russell Budd, spending more players, and 89 caps for England. York City player, and then Alfreton player. There's spending more against St. Albans. Bogner Regis, Nick Gordon has 67 caps for England at the age of 33. There's not many Man United players. So although Man United are dominating English football, they're not really helping the national team because there's, there's no one. There's a couple of Arsenal players, but it's all sort of... The rest, you know, the rest of the lot that are producing English talent. So I think we'll end it there for part five. I've found this fascinating. I hope you guys have too. Now there is actually going to be, at the time of uploading this, which is Saturday in November. What's the date going to be? Let me just check. Saturday is the 25th of November when this video goes up. Tomorrow, if you're watching this on the Saturday, there will be a new experiment starting. So keep your eye out for that. I'm happy to do a part six to this. Like I said, 200 likes on this video I think is enough interest for me to, to continue another 10 years. It does take a bit of time up, so I do need there to be a bit of interest for, for it to be worthwhile me continuing 10 years into the future. But until next time, enjoy FM18, and I'll see you very soon.